Hi there, it's Kevin with The Rogue Market here with a Booster Box opening and discussion about My Hero Academia. I think this is the most appropriate channel to put this on as I think I'm going to start discussing the viability and kind of the market of other games not called Magic the Gathering. Of course, we're still going to talk about Magic the Gathering, but I think it's worth the discussion, especially right now with all of the turbulence in the Magic the Gathering world, to kind of discuss what other cards games are doing, how well they're faring, and if there's any opportunity in these particular products. Now, I've been impressed with My Hero Academia. First of all, I'm not a weeb. I have no clue about My Hero Academia. I've never seen an a episode in my life. Um, but I have been following the trends and, and the market with it, and they actually have had very successful nationals and regionals. Um, and they've had tournaments already up to, I believe, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, and I think they're doing a big like $250,000 tournament for this. Uh, so it is from the Jasco line, so you can actually play the uh, anything with the Jasco, kind of what they call this universe series, they play together. So there's some old school ones that did okay, uh, like the Cabacon stuff like Street Fighter and Mega Man. Those did okay, but the My Hero Academia has definitely taken off, and it's under, under its third set. The Crimson Rampage, which was the second set, did very well. It actually exceeded expectations, and I believe that this one broke all the records already from Crimson Rampage. So now we have set over set over set that's done better than the previous set. So that's what you want to see in a card game. It's got a good IP, a good brand behind it. The universes can expand to other things, so if they want to be, have sort of how, how the Weish Wars works, where you, you're playing different animes, different animes, possibly that's a route they could go, or they could just go back to like the Street Fighter type thing. So My Hero Academia is most likely here to stay. Now, the single prices I haven't been too impressed with uh, because uh, per booster box that doesn't seem to have as many chase cards, there's like one or two. Um, what you want to see with a card game is you want to see a good spread of cards being uh, you know, really, really worthless down on the commons to then having like rares at C play worth like three, four or five bucks worth the, worth the price of the pack. And the, uh, then of course you want those super, super chase cards. So Magic Gathering is a perfect, um, game for that because you can tell that it has utility plus collectability. Pokemon is like an extreme end of one where, uh, they, they actually want their game to be accessible. So whenever like a V or a, a, a V star or, or whatever GX does well, they usually print a box set of it, which crashes the price of it. And then they keep the, like the Charizards and the, the more collectible stuff more rare, uh, for then people that are trying to catch them all or collect them, they can, they can chase for those. So I've always been very interested in the Pokemon market because if you actually look at deck lists, which is how I kind of got trained in Magic the Gathering finance is, Oh, I'll, I'll look at those legacy deck lists. When I first started, it was all about legacy. If you're cards weren't seen playing legacy and they once they wrote head uh, standard then who cared they weren't going to be worth anything and of course when modern hit then it was always following the modern trends and then of course commander and pioneer standard all those things have a lot of um they they the prices reflect how much they actually do see play pokemon not really so i'm seeing that with my hero academia it looks like the the collectible stuff is where the money's at at the moment uh but as more people actually pick up this game and play this game there might be that market for those you know lower end cards to start creeping up in value to be worth the pack or, or twice the pack or whatnot so flesh and blood is another one that i think has great utility too but they actually don't have good collectability so it's 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 kind of weird within the scope of collectible card games of how the markets work so anyway before i get into this this video is actually sponsored by one of my patrons bob's cards over at TC Player, I'll leave a link in the description below, and he is going to be doing a giveaway for anyone that mentions the Rogue Market or Rogue Deck Builder or Gone Rogue Games in and and purchases cards on TC Player. You'll be entered in to win this Infinity Collector Booster. So if you're in the market for TCG uh, Player singles, head on over there, and I'll have a link in the description below for Bob's cards. Great patron, I appreciate all you all the support and all you do for this channel. So. My Hero Academia. Again, this set has by far exceeded my expectations. I've been very, very leery or weary of these type of, of things when they come out because I've, I still have like Force of Will and uh, what some other games that have just died. Star Wars, uh, what is it called? Star Wars Destiny Little Dice game that, that they played or, or Keyforge. Like a lot of these games, they hit hard. They do well for a couple expansions and then they just die. And Yes, this could absolutely be the case for My Hero Academia, but they, they are supporting it. They have stores, have a whole play network where you can sign up for tournaments that they can uh, qualify for like regionals and nationals. Um, they're, like, the, the attendance for the events have gone up, up, up from month to month, year to year, which is a great sign for a game. And again, it's got this IP that's, that's very, very popular. My Hero Academia has been around forever. And it's got a lot of weebs that actually do enjoy this nonsense. So here's a playmat that goes with this stupid thing. So... 
not my cup of tea, but I'm not going to judge you. Actually, I will judge you for what you like, but uh, no no hard feelings if this is if this is what you're into. All right, so we're going to open up some packs, and I'll get some uh, of my comments about this or, or my opinions about this, and maybe you can enjoy some weeb cards, and we'll try to just kind of discuss market while I'm doing so as I can't even open this booster box. So I do like the quality of the cards here. Um, I've heard it, I have a couple patrons that are playing this game. One of them really wants me uh, to get into it because I think I'd like it because it has a real, you know, back and forth type feel to it. I've always said in Magic the Gathering, I've hated like the Wombo Combo eras, especially like my my least favorite time period in Magic the Gathering would have to be Throne of Eldraine, uh, Wombo Combo nonsense. So this is another thing I don't like about this. This is the whole reason to buy first edition packs is they have a quirk pack in there, but they put right on the cards, not for resale. Come on, you're a collectible card game. Let people, uh, you know, not worry about this, not for resale nonsense. And you do get, I do think you get one actual promo this might be what you get for the first edition so uh, another thing that i hope that jasco goes away from i'm not a big fan of you know putting box toppers only in first editions or specialty prints in first edition just do one and dones just do one and dones and move on to the next one and you know people can if you need to do a reprint set do what flesh and blood's doing now and put specific cards in reprint sets no more of this first edition and unlimited, you know, nonsense of of having the boxes be different values so bench press that's what kevin does every Tuesday. You can come find me at the gym. I'll be doing some, you know, getting swole doing those bench presses. So I think this guy has an advantage over me. has three arms. That's not, not a fair. So beautiful card there with the bench press. And then you have the two promo packs. Uh, this one is a two quirk packs. So they're going to have like foily versions as these suckers are kind of hard to open. Hopefully I don't damage any of the cards here. And we, whoa, <laughs> we have the hardened steel. Hardened steel, though, there. And then we are going to have... Yeah, I hate how they say this on there. And it's not stopping TC Player or eBay. People are still, even though it says not for resale, right there in big, bold letters, people still re resell these. What's the problem with reselling these? Not for resale. These should be fully... So, so Jazzy, will get away from that crap, too, with your promos saying not for resale. I, I get that you want the stores giving them out as promos, but it's not ever going to stop it. You don't control the free market. The free market does what it wants to do. So there's a chivalrous competitor. Uh, you can actually go on TC Player, and you can actually find pictures that will say not for resale right on them and people selling them. And sometimes these are the cards that do go for the most. There's like Judge um, judge promos, victory promos for playing in the... the uh, um, in the events and whatnot. So let's actually zoom in here a little bit so we can actually see the cards and we will get these boxes opened and I will flip through them a little bit and then we'll get to the juicier stuff as we go on. So we have the Brandish Steel. And again, I don't know how this deck works. I know you choose a character and there's the cost of the cards they have. It's kind of flesh and blood. Some things can be pitched for energy. Some things can be used for damage, I believe. I'm not quite sure how this works. But again, a lot of people do enjoy this game. And you can't argue with the numbers. I mean, the numbers are there. The attendances are good. The number of stores signing up for this is super good. It's been picked up by Asmodee to kind of frontline it, to distribute it. And all the other distributors have access to it as well. So it's got a lot of good stuff going for it. So... Um, there is room for other TCGs, and I think in this market too, with Magic the Gathering really suffering, I think people are going to start looking for other games to play. So there's the Command Pigeon Flock. So I'd be interested in the comments in the comments below if you have played this game, what you think about it, what you think the trajectory of this game is going to be. Is it going to die off like a Force of Will or a, um, a some of these other games like a, a Kaijudo or a Keyforge, or if it is going to last the test of time. Typical what I say is when you get over your like third expansion set and it's still doing well, then it's got, and that means the game does have some steam. So we'll get on to the good stuff here. We'll kind of flip through this, this shenanigans. We have that con conflict of ideologies, conflict of ideologies as our other foil. And I don't know where the rarity, I think as we go on, maybe we'll see if one of them's like really sticks out with rarity. But so far, these have just been kind of your base foil. So it looks like you get a foil per pack. Maybe you get... So they do say C's on them. So this one... Oh, okay, there we go. Right there in front of your face, Kevin. That one says R. So I wonder if any of these other ones here... So it goes common, 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 uncommon, 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 common. Okay, so you get a bunch of commons per packs and uncommons per packs, and your rare will be foiled. So you can actually distinguish between a rare and maybe an ultra rare here by 
uh, the foiling process. So we'll just look at the rares here in a bit and really get through these things. We'll kind of fan through them. But I mean, these are these cardstock's great on this stuff. The the pictures are taken, I believe, right from the the show, and nice clear colorings on these. So as far as card quality. It is super good here. So we have our ultra rare here for the first one being the Somnobulism. Somnobulism. I think I pronounced that right. Next up we have All Worked Up. That's what Kevin is about Magic the Gathering. I'm all Worked Up. And we have a Piercing Needle. Also an ultra rare. So we get two ultra rares in a row with a Piercing Needle. That one's kind of cool. I like how it shines right there. Really cool foiling process on these. Look how much these, these foils just pop. And so far, I don't think they have the curling problem that Magic does. The Magic's getting better with the curling problem. Got to give credit where credit's due. Uh, next up, we have Like the Wind. And then we have Laceration. Laceration as another rare from this. And... Someone tagged me in the, the comment section. We actually get a big hit. Uh, when I was looking a couple days ago, there wasn't enough price data on TCG Player to really see what these suckers were going for. I think a lot of people were testing the market too with uh, uh, what things would sell for. So it's all over the place of, of what these are. Okay, so this one looks like it's a different type of foiling. It's got the outside edges of it. This is the Talented Baker. Possibly it could be the same foiling and this just might be a different card type. Not quite sure, but it's kind of got those dots on the edges instead of you know foiling out all the other other stuff but maybe these other ones nope it does look different than the rest of the foiling that one is just a rare so if you do know how to play this game come into my store and teach me love to learn to play how to play this this thing i'm easily excited easily excited about learning new board games and that's why i still implore all of you that are magic gathering players to really uh broaden your horizons and try out some other ccgs and uh, board games especially. I think you'd be impressed with uh, how well they play. I know that Magic has its own little special. It, it, it really, really hooks the diehard players. And one of the very few CCGs that can do that, where more of the rest of them are more casual. 30 years of nostalgia, I guess. All right, so the forceful blow. And then we have a double. Well, oh, it looked like a double foil pack there for a second, but nope, just the lessons from Tayaki. Lessons from Otaki, giving you a fish. You see the main character? That the main character is? Not a clue with this game. Alrighty, so next up we have a successful results. Hopefully this is going to be a successful game. Have the results to back it up. And we have flex your might. That's what I'll be doing. Flexing my might, you little scrubs. Go to the gym. Do you guys even lift? Next up we have... carb loading and the friend of animals the friend of animals which is another rare so had a couple ultra rare pulls i don't know if there's anything above an ultra rare in it this and we have there we go ultra rare with the stun grenade stun grenade again i can't get over how nice these foils look this is a really Really schnazzy looking card game. Be interesting in years to come to look back at this video and see how well it aged. The bench press, that's what we got as our, our little foil here. So I guess that's kind of meh. Getting a bench press is a common as also this like, I guess this might be the only way to get the foil treatment though, because everything has been rare. So maybe this is like the only way. So if you wanted to foil out your deck, especially the commons, I don't know, I haven't seen anything that hasn't said rare. Or with the comments, but maybe we'll come across some. Maybe they just put rare, even though it's not a rare. Again, someone in the comment sections will have to let me know how it all works. Let's nullify. Nullify. Yeah, because this one says XRC, XRC on it. And it doesn't say not for resale on this sucker either. Huh, interesting. Honorable forfeit. Would you like to forfeit? Uh, we have nothing to see here. Nothing to see in this video. And then on to the next one. Again, we got the easily excited. That is the 
theme of this video, easily excited by these cards, and a sudden death assault. Sudden death assault. Kapow. Yeah, I'll have to learn about this too with like these little pitch zones, like where the cards are positioned on your play. Play mat is how much they cost to play them. Like you spend your life for your energy or something. I've got to play this game just to see what it's like. Spirited Referee. And this one looks like it's a double rare pack. So, okay, so it can happen. So this is our rare, which is the, the Tentacle Tactics. So I'm assuming this one might be like an XR, and this is the way you get the commons? Yes, okay, so there we go. So this is an XRC as well, with the full-on attack mode. And so, yeah, that is the way to get them. So, yeah, you got your regular R's. And I wonder if that other one... Okay, this foiling process does look different too. It's... Well, maybe not. It just looked like it had some the streaks in the card rather than just being all foil. So there's our XR. So maybe you can get an XRUR, which is probably the most expensive or, or, or hard to get ones. Oops, geez, off the camera here. And we have the Hero's Inspiration as a rare Hero's Inspiration. So I'm also interested to know what other people are playing right now with, are you still sticking with Magic? What's everyone doing? Are they just out of CCGs? You know, letting the... That's one other thing that I've noticed about these other card games. I mean, this is still a growing game, so they do need to increase their uh, volume of them, but they've been very good at not overprinting this game, kind of kind of printing demand it. Uh, you can still get the first set. You can still get the second set, but it's not like in insane amounts. Uh, so here's another, another double rare pack. So this one's a Freezer Burn with the XRC being the Blue, blue Flame palm strikes so so far two xrs in the box and then you do get the box topper with the xr and an honorable forfeit again with the confident inventor as another rare confident inventor brings us to the all worked up which uh again what i am and many other people are with Magic's horrible decision making. The Hardened Uppercut, uh, which is a rare. So, well, okay, maybe these XRs are a lot more common. Maybe it's just not all in this uh, last bit here with the engine trouble with a uh, with an uncommon. So, no, no, here we go. So, no, that is uncommon. I thought I saw, I saw XRUR, but it's XRUC on that. You can see right there, XRUC, which is uncommon. So, ex uh, the extremely rare uncommon, so the foil version. The bench press. Do you even lift, bro? And we have the ultra rare of Fierce Whirlwind. Fierce Whirlwind for the ultra rare. So, what was that? Three ultra rares so far in here. And another Spirit of Referee. So, common seem to be pretty common. I guess you'd see a lot of them in. Like magic too. So this is another XR pack. It looks like with an R with an influencing youth, and in demand, which is another common in or in denimed in denimed denim id in denimed. Three more packs to go. In box number one. Uh, watch from a distance. <laughs> yeah, there's your nice little. See the principal. He's watching from a distance, huh? Uh, we have the Grenadi Grenadier Bracers as a rare. So, grenades as bracers. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll have to watch the, one of one of this show. How weeby is this show? Like, a scale of one to, to like, Kevin vomits everywhere. How weeby is this? Hi, Hype Man. Has Hype Man actually hit this set yet? I don't think Hype Man's after, actually hyped this set. This, uh, this, um, My Hero Academia. Haven't seen any videos from Hype Man about it. Uh, then we have So Manly. That's definitely me. That's kind of cool. It's got the uh, a painting, that famous painting in the background. So Manly. Yeah, that should be a portrait of me. I'm so manly. Last pack in box number one. So what did we get? Like four XRs? Three of them were common and one was uncommon. So I'm not sure if XRs do exist in rares or ultra rares because they already have the foiling process. So we have the Dexter, <laughs> Dexterous Appendages. Yeah, hey, she, she seems fun. Or 
maybe not with appendages. And then one with nature as a rare, one with nature. So there's box number one for the My Hero Academia. Again, this is sponsored by our good friend over at Bob's Cards. So if you're looking for Magic the Gathering cards and want to be entered into this beautiful Infinity Collector's Edition, uh, if you purchase a product and just mention in the notes that you came from Gone Rogue Game slash Rogue Deck Builder slash Rogue Market slash, just say Kevin, you know who it is, the ugly guy on YouTube, uh, you'll be entered in to win that. So here we go. On to the next one. So we have the strongest hero, My Hero Academia. And this one is a uh, patent observation, which is an XRSE secret edition, maybe. So maybe here's the the uh, XRSE. So this one was a XRS. I wonder what SE is. SE. We haven't even seen any SE. So this one actually might be a card that is worth some money right here because uh, of that. Who knows? Of the um, different card or uh, rarity that we have not seen yet. So we've seen the URs. We've seen R's. We have not seen an SRCSE or X XRSC. We have Deathly Arms. That's what I'm working for. Get swole. Get swole. The Death Death Arms, not Deathly Arms. Death Arms. That guy is ripped. So if you are interested in this product too, I do have this available. Uh, my Hero Academia. I still have a lot left. I actually need to, to move some of this stuff. So if you're interested in learning this game, and uh, there are starter decks, there are um, what are called loadable content decks, and there are, of course, are booster boxes for this. And I can get play mats, all that kind of jazz. So if you're looking for a break for Magic, definitely hit me up. If you're not a patron, maybe go ahead and take this moment to look at my Patreon and see if it's for you. Um, I try to give prices that are distributor prices. And yeah, backdraft. Pretty cool. There's the backdraft. And we will blow through these suckers. Okay, another easily excited. With more bracers. We've already seen that sucker. The bracers. See if we can just get a regular SE here. And maybe that's a... Ooh, this pack. I open up. Upside down. We have the Lessons from Taiki. We've seen that card as well. So, so far, two for two duplicates out of this box. So how many cards are in this set? It looks like 108 is all. So actually, it pretty be, should be pretty easy to get these the full set. So Influenced by the Youth. Yep, we've seen that one. And there's the Mezo Shui. Mezo Shoji. X-R-U-C. Mezo Shoi. Which is pretty cool. And we have... The next one is going to be Like the Wind. That's what I run. Like the Wind. We have Extendo Hair Strike. Extendo Hair Strike, which we have seen before. Come on, SE out of the regular pack. Unless the only way you get them is the box toppers. Then you really have to collect those. Um, which is another business model I don't like. If it's like only out of the box toppers, you can get something. There's another Ultra Rare with the first Whirlwind. We did get that one out of the first one as well. And then we have the All Worked Up. Don't know why I read the first card. So manly. Hey, 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 there's my card again. That is definitely the Kevin card. And got a place at a bench press now. At least a place at a bench press. Uh, <laughs> tentacle strike, huh? 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 Who's up for that? Man, there's a lot of three-armed people. Window shopping. And the Engine Boost, which is another Ultra Rare. Engine Boost, Ultra Rare. Let's go. Next up, we are Upside Down with Easily Excited with the Upside Down pack. Uh, with recovery Time. Having that cup of tea to recover. The Forceful Blow. Um, ooh, this one looks pretty cool. This is another Ultra at the Wind-Up Punch. So this, this box is at a, a bunch of Ultra Rares right off the bat with the Wind-Up Punch. Wind-Up Punch. Kapow. 
successful results. So there's allies in here. There's charges, punches. So there must be like what? Um, now I'm like looking at, at these different stuff. Is so this is a kick. Uh, this is an, an, a foundation, an attack, attack charge range. Okay, so they have like card types on them. As I'm finally, I'm off the screen here reading them to myself. Actions, attacks, foundations, and a foundation, friend of animals. So I'm not sure what a foundation is, but we have another friend of animals. We've seen that guy before. I guess you can tell by the color of the card what it is too. So again, foundation with easily excited, attack, foundation, foundation, attack, foundation, foundation. So it doesn't seem like it has too many card types. We have another, so this will have our ultra, or I mean our uh, XR in it. Talented Baker and full in attack mode. Up, up next is going to be A, Stain. That's what you guys are, you weebs. You're a stain on my existence. Uh, the Command Pigeon Flock, who is also a friend of animals, which is attacking. And do these attacks specifically go towards someone? I'm not sure. There's all these other symbols, too, that are on the left. I, I wonder if they have any sort of, you know, see these symbols right here? I wonder if so. If there's, if these are different characters they go with or their types. Well, I'll have to learn this. Interesting, interesting. We got the stun grenade. Another ultra rare. Wow, this, this box has just had the ultra rares packed. Ultra rare. So I guess it's going to be a little bit like magic. Um, ultra is probably not quite a mythic, but and rare, rare is definitely rare though. So because you get one per pack, so it's not like flesh and blood where you get more rares in a pack than one. One with nature again. Was this a different looking card for one? one? No, this was the same with one with nature. There's friend of the animals I'm thinking of here. So, ooh, as I throw that card, threw it on the ground. Okay, swish, swish. Gotta make that sound when you play that card. Ha! Huh. Male bonding. Anyone want to male bond with me? You know you do. You seen these abs? Uh, we have laceration, laceration, which is a rare and and nope, just a common with a frozen slash. It'd be freezing. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong. The only difference between first edition and normal is the box top is the promos, not even the box topper. I think it's these things that just come out of it. The quirk packs. Not sure. Not sure. Another like the wind. And he can't escape me. And the good old cheerleaders. Who doesn't like a good old cheerleader? I'm not sure about the invisible cheerleader, but we, we like the visible cheerleader. Nothing wrong there. Uh, so we got some successful results with the cheerleader. And some sticky balls from the... I won't even finish that sentence. All right, Freezer Burn, uh, which is a rare, and oop, there we go. There is the Thrilled, so I'm going to set this guy aside, the Thrilled Spectator XRSE, to see if that's like the, these are like the ultra, ultra rare cards. So, so far, we got one out of two boxes. So, maybe you average one per box. Carb loading. With a uh, piercing needle, which is another ultra rare. That, this box has been fire. This one had a lot more ultra rares than the first one. With that Essie. Kapow. And we got all worked up again. With the conflict of ideologies. The conflict of ideologies. And Last up, or not last up, we have a couple packs after this one. I like the win. So it does seem like you get most of the commons out of one box. The sticky ball pitch. The sticky ball pitch. Saw that one a couple packs ago. Do we see that as not a rare, or was there a sticky ball something else? I thought there was a sticky ball that we just... Huh. I'm going to go through this a little bit slower to see if... if yeah, foils are always rare, so... Common, common, uncommon, uncommon, uncommon. So three uncommons, and you get to your slots. The tentacle tactics. The tentacle. Tentacle, when it's spelled tentacle tactics. And righty. We have the water pump. Uh, 
<laughs> There's those dexter dexterous appendages. Seems fun. Ah, oh, and the heroic clash. There's an SR. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside because I think this is the first SR we've seen. So you are SR, SE. I don't know. I don't know. We'll look that one up too. Look up all the ones here at the very end of what they are, how much they are. So again, there might not be some good sales data for this. Another you are though for the sludge. So this box was just popping. This box was insane as far as the uh, XRs and stuff are concerned. Last pack here, and then I'm going to go ahead and bear with me a second as I pull up. Hopefully it doesn't screw up the video as I pull it up as I'm on my laptop, not on my desktop with multiple screens here. The UA High School. Uh, and that is an R. So let's see here. Let's see if we can pull up the good old TC player and see what any of these are worth if we can actually find them. Heroic Clash. Yeah, it's not even... Okay, so XR, Heroic Clash. It calls it an XR, but this one... Ooh, this is a $40 card. No, okay, so this one looks differently. I wish I could sh show people because this, this one has like a little... has writing over here, which this one doesn't. It has some Japanese writing um, on here. And yeah, I can't show the screen here, but it everything else looks the exact same. So this is, this is the SR version. And yeah, the other one says XSR version. It's, it's going for, man, there's a lot of them sold today. Today, there was four of them sold over $40. Uh, the lowest printing is another 40 on here. And then it goes right up to 60 bucks for at least the XR version of this. Um, let's see if we can find just the regular hero, hero clash, hero, heroic clash. So heroic clash. Okay, so here we go. This gives it a different... All right, so this one's 10 bucks. So it looks like this one, this particular version is a $10 card. So I think these ones are the ones that are harder to find. Let's look up the Thrilled Spectator. And the sales date is on here pretty good. Like they're moving here on TC Player. That one has one, two, three, four, five, six copies in yesterday. So that's not bad. I mean, it's, it's very comparable to Magic for, a, you know, good. When I'm looking at cards to spec as to to buy into for Magic the Gathering, I think we're going to go up. Like, if you see, like, five or six a day, that's pretty decent. That means it's going to be um, outstretched. So, okay, so here we go with this one. This one's just a buck. This one, just a buck for this Thrilled Spectator. does look like it's the same. So maybe these aren't as rare as I think. Uh, not a lot of listings, though. Wow. Okay, that, yeah, this one just needs more price data here. Seven of them have sold for a dollar. Um, and then there's a couple listings at a dollar. Then it jumps up to five. And then it goes all the way to, to way more than that. So, okay, so patient observation. Let's look at these suckers. So patient observation. And this is the XR version. XRSE again for this sucker. Uh, Ten bucks. Ten bucks for this one. Wow. Uh, pretty decent sales data again for this one. Well, not really. This one has a little weaker sales data uh, for the first ones of these sold for 15 though. And then it's slowly gone down to 10. So I think something like bench press probably won't be worth much. Um, but yeah, it's kind of cool though that we are getting the, the sales data. So we've got bench press in the SR version. And yeah, buck fifty. Not, not a lot of sales data for it though. So pretty cool though that there's like a four dollar card here and has the sales data back it up. So I mean that box definitely definitely made its money worth. I'll have to check some of these other uh universe or so so, so looking at cards sold. Uh ultra rares, eight dollars, six dollars, nine dollars. So ultra rares tend to, to go within you know that price range. It looks like the um so the most expensive cards are both the Heroic Clash and the Aggressive Clash are both going for a really good price at 40 bucks. And there's a lot of cards, though, 5, 6, and the sales day, the sales day is pretty decent. Pretty decent for this game. So, I don't know, pretty cool. If you're looking at to uh, kind of jump in another market or, you know, jump in another game to play it, I think this one actually, it's backing it up. I, I, I'd be really interested to, like, compare sales data with something like Flesh and Blood or Yu-Gi-Oh, for example. I'm, I'm sure Yu-Gi-Oh has better sales data. Uh, but Yu-Gi-Oh, talk about a company that is really tight in their belt. So I've been getting emails from Yu-Gi-Oh saying that they will not print more. Like you have to get your numbers in super early and they are doing extremely tight print runs for Yu-Gi-Oh uh, for these upcoming sets. So they've really adjusted for this recession. Um, and 
Uh, problem with Yu-Gi-Oh is they keep reprinting the same cards over and over, so it's just gotten kind of boring and old with a lot of these type of uh, sets that get released. But they are really, really tightening their belt with Yu-Gi-Oh, and I'm expecting these other a bunch of these other companies to do so. But so far, My Hero Academia gets some thumbs up for me as, as far as it looking over and analyzing the sales data for it. Seems pretty sharp. Um, let's actually look at booster boxes that have sold for the My Hero Academia. So, so right now, my uh, Heroes Clash hero clash booster box i wish i could pull these up for everyone hero clash is going Ugh. okay let's get back to tc player doesn't want to find the heroes clash come on you can do it we can pull this up heroes i need to get another screen so that i can start sharing my desktop here as i search through this so first edition here boosters box sales data from this set so what we just opened here is oh okay so it flatlined out at 80 yesterday they were all purchased now we're back up to we're back up to 90s out of this so yesterday someone put all of theirs up every single one of them that this seller put up yesterday was sold at 80 bucks and they had about 15 it looks like and so we're back up to about the 90 dollars 85 90 dollars is what they're moving for um, someone on has 200 of them for 88 bucks. Uh, but after that though, yeah, I checked this yesterday. There was a lot under this, per this seller with 199 of them. Um, so I think my cost for them is 65. If you're a patron, that's actually a pretty decent spread compared to magic, the gathering. So these suckers, they're moving too. So how many sold today? It looks like we have, so, so far today, four boxes of sold off TC player yesterday, a bunch sold off of of TC player so these suckers are moving the cards are moving and it actually looks like it has has some legs to this game hope you enjoyed this analysis for another card game i'll be doing other ones for for other games coming up um and if you have any suggestions for where to go with this i'll, I'll get back to the magic the gathering finance right now magic the gathering is just such in a crappy state that it's 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 kind of pointless talking about finance when it's like, uh, you're going to be holding things right now. You're going to be selling or holding. And I don't really think that selling is the best route either with, um, I don't know. There are some nuances. Like I've noticed single prices for pioneer can get pretty expensive for specific single prices. I need to do a video on like how the Chandra spell book is actually not that bad of a buy right now because you can actually piece it out and actually make profit after TCG player for how much some of these cards are are going because there is a foil slot in here too but i do need to get back to it again i i sound like a broken record when i say hey i'm gonna get back to doing videos i'm gonna get back to doing videos I'm gonna... but yeah um well i'll do my best that's the only thing i can promise anyway i hope you enjoyed this video this has been kevin with the good old gone rogue game slash rogue market slash rogue deck builder remember to check out bob's cards link in the description below thanks for watching